Hello. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important concepts in Word, and those are breaks. So there are two kinds of breaks. They both live under the Page Layout tab. So you've got a top and a bottom half. You've got page breaks here, which are aesthetics, right? It's about pushing things down to a new page or a new column. And section breaks, which are about formatting. So these are formatting related. These are about just the way the document looks. We're not going to look at every one of them today, but we'll look at some of them. Let's say that for some reason I wanted this page to end after this word. So the naive approach is to just press enter several times. And that gets you down to a new page. And if you don't have the show hide button on, you're like, okay, fine, I guess, right? That looks okay. You should always have this on. I'm telling you this is a bad idea because how real life works is you sometimes you decide, oh, this paragraph's kind of junk, right? And then I, and I delete this paragraph. And now that's no longer page two. And oftentimes when you're doing hacky things like just slamming a bunch of enters in there, you're probably doing that on multiple pages and then every time you edit your document, everything's all misaligned. So that's one reason why you wouldn't want to do it aside from me just telling you that it's wrong. Instead, if you were to want to go to a new page, you should use a page break. And so, uh, notice that's where I wanted my, my breaking point to be. So when you are working with breaks, I like to understand this is one of the few things that goes behind the cursor. So I place my cursor literally one character further than I am thinking that I would want this thing to be. I, so I click here, head to the page layout tab, I go to breaks, and since all I want is a new page and the formatting is not going to change, I'm going to click that and you can see it shoved it down. And so you can see, let's do that thing I did last time, delete a paragraph. So notice now I'm free to edit anything on page one and I don't have all these weird misalignment issues on page two. That's kind of a weird place to have a break. All right, that looks better to me. Okay, so that's a page break. So that doesn't do anything to the formatting. Now what I mean by that is, let's say for some reason, I wanted to change my margins to narrow. That's one of the easier ones for me to illustrate. So obviously page one has narrow margins, but so does page two, and so does page three. So there's a slew of formatting options which I need something to stop. So a page break push pushes me to a new page. Let's go to page two and uh, we'll play around with some other kind of breaks. So let's say that I wanted these two uh, paragraphs here to be in a two column format. This is probably a hard thing to do and so let's uh, let's take this for what it is. So if I wanted these two columns to be in a, so these two paragraphs to be in a two column format, that would mean I need a section break above them because I don't want anything above this point to be uh, in the two column format, which would mean I'm going to go to breaks. And notice I keep saying the word format, format, format. So that means I'm down in here. Next page allows me to change the formatting and jumps me to the next page. Continuous means I don't want to go to a new page, and it doesn't. But now I'm free to make formatting changes. So let's set this to two columns and see how it, how it works out. And you can see that the entire, what I'm calling section two of my document, is all a multi-column layout now. And everything above the section break was unaffected. So section breaks, I think of them like a dam in a river. Um, and when you apply formatting to a document, it's going to just go to the end unless you put one of these breaks in the way. So you can see it, it knew that there was a section break above it, so it just didn't apply past that point. Now, I think what I said is that I just wanted these two paragraphs to be uh, two columns. So if I wanted to do that, uh, so I clearly separated the top part out, but I also need to separate out the bottom part. So in other words, I want these two columns to be, or these two paragraphs to be two columns. So that means I'm going to place my cursor here, one character after, insert another continuous section break, and nothing happens. Right? I mean, I put this little, it, this thing's written in Latin, so it's kind of a, kind of tough to interpret, but I'm going to go down. So there's a break. There's a break. Notice we can't see much there. If there's not enough room to really display the break well, then it won't display well, which is kind of tough. Notice that didn't change any of my column issues. I still have to go into columns and go one, which is kind of usually throws people for a loop. And there you can see I have the desired effect. So 
I've got section one, section two, and section three is everything below that. So notice I used the section break to say, hey, I'm about to change the formatting again, and then it was still my responsibility to go into the third section and reset it to one column, which typically throws people for a loop. I think oftentimes people have this idea that as soon as they put a section break in there, everything's going to reset to normal, but it doesn't. Let's look at the last kind of break, which is worth talking about. I'll just start it on page three. Or how about here? Let's say from this point forward, I want to go to three columns. Who knows why I would want to do that, but I do. So I go breaks. Since I'm going to be changing the formatting, I'm going to be in this group. Since I want to stay on the same page, I'm going to do continuous. Now I'm just down here. I think I'm in section four now. Let's go to three columns. Right, and notice the entire rest of my document is now three columns. Now the only thing I wanted to point out is this page looks pretty good, I guess. This one seems kind of weird that this column's full. So I want to show you something called column breaks. Column breaks are used to kind of, quote, even out the text. So let's say I want to try and get two columns, or sorry, two paragraphs in each column. So in other words, I want this to spill over to that column there. So the naive approach is this, right, not a good idea. But what you can do is you can place your cursor here. Let's go into breaks. And if I want to go to a new column, I'm going to use a special kind of break called a column break. So at this point, you've seen the three most common ones page, column, and, and continuous section break. So column break does not change the formatting, it just breaks me over to a new column. And you can see that doesn't look any better, but if I put a column break here, now that text is more even. Now is even better? Well, I can't tell you that it is or it isn't, but uh, I don't know, maybe it is. I even got a little staircase effect going on. So we just looked at breaks, and so I'll just recap it the same way I started off. These are page breaks. These are just uh, to move text to a new column or a new page of the document. These are section breaks, which will allow, will allow you to apply different formatting to different parts of your document. Now, if you're just writing an essay, you're not going to have uh, different parts of your documents with different formats in them. But it doesn't take a lot of imagination to come up with a few scenarios where you might need section breaks. Now, while it's true that oftentimes there's, there's a lot of situations where you can let Word kind of insert your breaks for you, oftentimes you don't get exactly what you're, you're looking for. So take it from me, spend some time practicing breaks and understand what these are all about because there's going to become a point where you need them. Thanks for watching.